Now, Kenya's president said on Wednesday that he won't sign into a law to uh, finance a bill proposing new taxes that prompted thousands of protesters to storm the parliament the previous day, leaving several people killed as police opened fire. It was the biggest assault on Kenya's government in decades. The government wanted to raise funds to pay off its debt, but uh, people in Kenya have said the bill would have caused more economic pain as millions struggle to get by. Now, Tuesday's chaos led authorities to deploy the military and the Kenyan president, William Ruto, called protesters' action a treason. Now, he now says that the proposed bill caused widespread dissatisfaction and that he has listened and conceded. It's a major setback for Ruto, who came to power promising to help people in Kenya cope with the rising costs, but has seen much of the country, led by its youth, unite in opposition to his latest attempted reforms. We have made significant progress in pulling the nation back from the brink of debt distress. Our debt situation is better managed and our budget now has space for investment and in programs aimed at easing the hardship on vulnerable people and creating opportunities for our young people. And listening keenly to the people of Kenya who have said loudly that they want nothing to do with this Finance Bill 2024. I concede, and therefore, I will not sign the 2024 Finance Bill, and it shall subsequently be withdrawn, and I have agreed with these members that that becomes our collective position. The President has looked at it from the aftermath perspective of the unrest, not the causal root of the unrest. He neglected his speech, neglected addressing the causal root of the unrest, and beyond the criminal justice system as the solution or the fitting intervention to the unrest moving forward. He forgot to address the civil way in which these unrest can be quelled across the country.